Welcome to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton. We are back with another Under 23s report now with our Under 23s experts, the Liverpool House, Sam Carroll. Welcome to the show again, Sam. How, how are you doing? You're right. Not too bad at all, Tom. Thanks for the uh, thanks for the nice introduction. <laughs> oh, Anytime. Uh... It's, it's got to be. I've got to, I've got to keep it up now. Every, every report can't give you a bad one now, otherwise I'll be letting you down. Um, so yeah, back to <laughs> the 23s in terms of uh, their results. We've obviously just seen the the mini derby the other day uh, ending a. A one-one draw. Uh, I think Everton. If I'm right, Everton twenty three is at seventh in the table. Uh, so how are they getting on at the moment? Could you give us a bit of an update on uh, on what's going on with the twenty three is? Yeah, I think since since we last spoke, they haven't uh, they haven't played too many games, have they? So um, yeah. it was a similar position they were in. They've had a few uh, tough games. They played Brighton just before the start of the January transfer window, um, and then they obviously lost Matthew Pennington. Went went to Shrewsbury on loan, but I think everyone kind of expected that. And then they had the Liverpool game, and then after that they, they've lost Ellis Sims. So it's a, it's a slight risk. I don't think there's any plans to to bring in a, bring in a replacement for Ellis at the moment. You know, they're not quite out of the picture for you know getting relegated, but it's a tight league. You know, two or three wins, and you'll probably be up to second or third on the table as well. So it's just Leicester to play now until the end of the January transfer window, and, and the squad could look uh, even more different to the one we've seen against Liverpool. I think you know Josh Barler probably still wants to get out on loan even though he's just coming back from injury. Nathan Broadhead potentially would want to go out on loan and is one of the players that I think Unsworth would look to play centre-forward now that Sims has gone. Um, and there's Benny Beningami still in there as well, and another player who you know, we, we all know from, from the first team uh, and his career hasn't quite panned out the way uh, anyone would have wanted it really. So he's still in there and could potentially look for a loan. Uh, and, and there's more questions that, that we'll potentially come on to as well about about other players and, and where they feature for the long term. So, very much middle of the board um, uh, for the league table. But as we've said before, you know, we've, we've won league titles. We've, we've known Everton to win two league titles, haven't we, in the last couple of seasons? And it doesn't necessarily uh, mean that, you know, there's going to be 11 lads coming through ready to play in the first team. So, um, I don't think Unzi will be too, too concerned by the league table either way. I think there's, there's definitely some winnable games coming up. Um, and even as we've seen against Liverpool, you know, there's, there's games, there's nowhere first team lads have to drop down, you know, like in Kunku, Brantwaite did something similar before he went out on loan to Blackburn. And Joe Virginia as well could, could probably feature unless he goes out on loan. So there'll still be a strong team regardless of who leaves. But uh, as I'm sure we'll talk about, we'll be very interested now to see an under 23 team without Ellis Sims for the first time in, in 18 months or so and, and, and see where the, the goals come from after, after Ellis. Yeah, definitely. We thought about Ellis Sims. Then in terms of, obviously, he's, um, most people know that he's just gone out on loan to Blackpool. Uh, kind of come out of, out of the blue. I, re- I didn't really hear about rumours. Uh, kind of just um, kept that quiet before it happened. Um, it seems like a good move for him now. Uh, so how's he done like overall this season for the, for the 23s and how, how will this, uh, this move potentially aid his pro- progression going forward? I think it was, it was pretty much on course. I remember speaking to uh, David Unsworth at the start of last season when he first was promoted and obviously uh, I think anyone who's listened to this will probably have seen this if, if they've got an interest in, in the young the younger players but there was a lot of excitement around Ellis wasn't there when people I think people still share it now on Twitter you know the, the 54 goals he scored for the under 18s or whatever that was and everyone was excited by that uh, but you know speaking to David Unsworth he, he didn't expect them to do the same you know I don't think Ellis did himself to, to go into the under 23s and score goals to a similar ratio to, to what he was doing in the under 18s where he had a physical advantage. You know, he's a lot bigger than most of the lads he was coming up against. But having said that, I don't think Everton expected him to do as well as he did last season. You know, he did get quite a few goals um, and, and was starting to just kind of learn his trade a little bit. You know, certainly defensively, working hard off the ball, trying to see a little bit more of what we see, you know, in Dominic Calvert-Lewin week in, week out. And he just brought that into this season as well. You know, eight goals, 12 appearances. And it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good goal scoring record and, I think it's an exciting move for him now in that Everton said in the summer, you know, that they wanted to keep him, keep him around the first team. I think he'd been on the bench a couple of times, maybe, against, certainly against Newcastle in the Premier League, I remember that. Um, but they wanted to keep him in and around, training with the first team, laying under Ancelotti, Calvert-Lewin, uh, Tosin, people like that. Uh, but n- now the time is right. Everton came out and said, you know, I think it was on the day. I think John Ebrill said, you know, we, we do expect him to go out on loan. Um, so, I think there was, there was other bits of interest as well. I think maybe from Accrington, Stanley and teams like that in League One. But I think Blackpool is quite exciting because it's Neil Critchley who, you know, 
he, he saw through the likes of Curtis Jones and Nico Williams as, as Liverpool's 23 manager in the last couple of years. And I thought that was quite uh, quite a nice piece of praise, you know, that Ellis had been on his radar since since he came up against them. Do you know what I mean? So he'd obviously noticed Ellis in, in those games when he'd first broken into the under-23s and kept his eye on them. And Neil seems like a man who, who's certainly capable of developing young talent and, and will put his faith in lads if, if he thinks he's good enough. So it'd be exciting, I think, as Evertonians, wouldn't it? You know, a lot of people are talking about strikers and what happens after Moise Keane and things like that. But it'd be nice, wouldn't it, if, if Ellis went in and scored 10, if he scores 10 goals between now and the end of the season or, you know, even if he just gets five or six goals and, and shows that he's got something, then it'd certainly make um, for an interesting selection for, for Carlo, wouldn't it, in the summer of saying, does he then come back and challenge for the first team spot or then do you look to move him up to, you know, a championship loan and, and give him a full season out like that? So it'll be interesting to see and I think there'll be a lot of Everton fans watching out for the, the Blackpool results in the next few weeks and, and hoping he gets a few goals because, He's someone that's interested fans since he since he scored those goals under eighteen level and signed his first pro contract. So hopefully, uh, hopefully we can get a few Blackpool games on on Sky in the next few weeks or BT and and have a watch. Yeah, definitely, it'll be interesting to see what is step up to the first team. You know, senior football, uh, obviously he's been he stepped up to the under twenty threes and everyone was keenly watching that. But it'd be interesting to see how it gets on in terms of evidence search for potentially a backup striker as well with uh, Moise Keane looking potentially likely to go out there. Uh, on a permanent deal to PSG uh, and uh, Cheng Tosin has been linked with West Brom as well I'm not sure how much is in that but uh, a lot of a lot of fans have been saying we, we potentially need another uh, backup striker and Ellis Sims if he if he does well at Blackpool could potentially prove to be that um, another player who's been getting interest from um, from other clubs as well uh, in, in the under 23s or he's most, most recent, uh, recently he's been with the, the 18s and he's, he's just stepped up to the under 23s and I heard recently as well that he, he was training I think once or twice with the first team as well Thierry Small he's been getting a lot of t- attention this season uh, for some yeah. good performances uh, so a lot of fans don't really know too much about Thierry Small so can you can you tell us a bit more about him and how, how he's done for the under 23s when he's been with David Unsworth yeah, to be honest, I, I hadn't I hadn't heard the name myself until the summer, and I was speaking to a few lads who who play for the 23s, and and, I, and I've been working with them, and and they said, you know, there's a lad, he's he's only 16, and and he's boss, you know, you should see him in training, he's he's got something about him, and and they were they were talking about Thierry Small, and and then rumours did start to come out, you know, saying about uh, I think linked with Bayern Munich and Arsenal, which was surprising, and it was around that time. It coincided then with, with David Unsworth giving him his, his his full debut. I think he came on in the nil nil against Tottenham, uh, and then he made his full debut against Blackburn uh, in November time. And you would not have you you would not have said it was a sixteen year old lad making his first appearance for the for the under twenty three. He was brilliant. You know he's 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 fast. He's he's agile. He he wants to get forward. Uh, he's, he's you know quite small, but but holds himself well defensively. Very strong. Um, and he had a great game. Played full ninety minutes at Blackburn. It was a freezing cold night, um, but Evan got to, got a one-one draw. And, and Thierry Small was a was a big part. And things have happened pretty pretty quickly for him after that. Then he had, he has been training with the first team. Obviously, when Luca Dean got injured, they needed someone to to kind of fill in in training at left back for you know full scale matches and things like that. And I think that was part of the reason why Thierry moved up. Uh, but Carlo Ancelotti seems, you know, seems impressed by him as well. I think he spoke about him a couple of times, um, and and certainly is aware of his of his presence in the team. So I think the next big thing for Everton will be to to get him tied down to a to a first professional contract, uh, make sure his future lies, you know, at Goodison Park because he certainly seems very very exciting, similar to to Anthony Gordon. Really, I think you know that Everton have got a player on their hands when you know they're getting moved up through the age groups at a very young age. You know, I think. People have been frustrated over the last few years having lads who are 22, 23, still playing under 23 football. Whereas, you know, Anthony spent very little time in the under 23s before moving up to the first team. And, and you know, Thierry to be playing in the under 23s at 16 at any club, you know, is certainly a, a, a fast tracked uh, scenario for him. So, you know, I think everyone um, is pleased by his development. And, and I think, you know, I spoke to David Unsworth after that Blackburn game and kind of said, you know, was you nervous putting a, a young lad in in a game like this? You know, the pitch wasn't great, cold night, uh, bad conditions. But he said, you know, I wouldn't put anyone in if, if I didn't think they were ready. And, and he's certainly ready. He said he's been 
you know, obviously been leaning on Leighton Baines for support as well in, in his in his new coaching role at the club. So, you know, what a mentor he is to have as well for, for Leighton moving uh, for Thierry moving forwards. That's that's another benefit of having Leighton Baines at the club, isn't it? Um, which is which is exciting for fans. So I think he's certainly got the right people around him. Seems to be a lad who's got his uh, his his feet on the ground as well in terms of his progression. And you know, right now, Luca Dean, Niels Nkunku, Ben Godfrey, and uh, and Thierry Small, we're doing all right at, le- at left at left back, aren't we? I think Thierry has played centre back and left mid as well for the under 18s um, So seems like he's versatile. You can't get enough left footers in the squad, I don't think so. Exciting times for him. It is, yeah. Good uh, prospect for the future. I think the first I saw of him was, uh, I think, BBC did the series on YouTube uh, on Wonder Kids, I think they called it. Oh, and uh, yeah. he won it. Uh, so that's something to watch as well. If you've not seen too much of him, he seems, yeah, yeah. seems to have a uh, good ball control and, and, and skills as well. So uh, for a defender as well, which is really impressive. So watch that if you haven't already uh, to get, known, get to know him a little bit more. Uh, another player who's, who's been impressing in the 23 years. Uh, so much that he has been training with the first team as well is Tyler on Yango. Uh, now, do you think that's a, a case of needing numbers to train with the first team, or do you think on Yango has a real prospect of, of of getting into the first team in the future? It's a little bit of both, isn't it? I think there's definitely the case of would he be training with the first team if we had Jabam and uh, Alan, Fabian Delph available? Probably not. But at the same time. Uh, he seems now in in the training pictures that the club released to to certainly be you know regularly invited back to to under twenty three training. And I think Carlo Ancelotti is long enough in the tooth that if a young lad did get moved up and maybe he thought, all right, this isn't really working for us, then he he, he would be moved down and replaced. And and you know you've still got to think that you know we've got Mo Besic and people like that knocking about in in under twenty three training as, as far as we know. So. You know, it's a, it's a nice thing for Tyler to be moved up and I think certainly his progression over the last 12 to 18 months deserves that. He has still quite uh, got a slim frame, only a young lad, you know, 16, 17. But he has been quite impressive over the last few seasons of just learning his craft in that little hole in midfield. You know, it's, it's an easy reference to make because he's quite tall and he's got a little afro, but he does have a, a shade of Marouane Fulhaney about, about his, uh, certainly about his running style, but then I think his his actual um, technical ability is quite different. You know, he, he's, he's not scared to get forward, get into the box. He scored a good goal against, uh, I think it was Chelsea this season, you know, made that little late run into the box, gets on the ball and scores goals. So he's had a little bit of everything to his game. It was, again, him at Blackburn, you know, ter- terrible game for most of it. And, and he was the one to capitalise on a mix-up between the goalkeeper and the uh, and the centre-back to, to, to score a tap-in. So it's not often that you have a, a box-to-box midfielder like that at his age, who's just getting that little knack, that almost the smell, isn't it, of, of, of being in the right place at the right time to score goals. So he is certainly uh, making strides, but I think he'd probably have to follow a similar path to Ellis. I, I think he probably needs to bulk out a little bit, uh, certainly for senior football. So I don't know if it's a case now of keeping him in and around the first team training for the rest of the season, you know, working with people like um, Gilfie Sigurdsson and Abdullah the core, Alan when he comes back, all these Andre Gomez, Tom Davies, you know, it can only be good for him. And 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 then I'd say they'll probably make a decision in the summer of, of whether to get him alone or like Ellis, keep him keep him until January and, and, and then when he's, you know, around eighteen, look to get him some experience. But in the meantime, certainly I'd I'd be looking maybe next season if we get a favourable draw in the in the Carabao or the early rounds of the FA Cup to, to hopefully see him in a squad because it does look like he's uh He's a regular in, in first team training at the moment, so it'll be interesting to keep our eye on on that when Alan, Jabam, and, and Delft do come back. But as long as he keeps staying in those performances for the under 23 years, you know he's, he's a regular. Uh, Unsworth, I think, totally trusts him and, and and likes what he what he brings to the team. So yeah, it's a it's a nice position to be in at the moment, and for Onyango, and hopefully he can keep uh, keep progressing like that. Yeah. Um... Sounds like he's another promising one as well. Uh, well. You mentioned a few names before. Do you think are ready for loan moves potentially this uh, January before the window closes? Uh, is there any others who you think uh, might end up going out on loan in terms of um, in terms of players who were, who were wanted to go out on loan? You mentioned uh, the likes of Broad, Ed and Bowler. Who else do you think will, uh, will be looking to, to leave before the, the window closes? I think there's a, there's a fair few you know decisions that you can just kind of point out through through going through really, can't you? I think 
they've got to make a decision on on Jal Virginia, but I think that then depends um, on the goalkeeping situation as a whole. You know, what, what does Jonas Lossel want to do? He, he left last January to try and make sure he got his place in the Denmark team for, you know, Euro 2020, which has been pushed back. So I think Carlo has shown so far he likes to have three goalkeepers in the squad. Um, so if Lossel goes out on loan uh, this month, then I'd imagine Jao might have to stay and, and be part of that kind of three goalkeeper rotation. In, term, in in training, you know, working with Robin Olsen and Jordan Pickford. But if not, he, he could be one who potentially pushes for a low move. But again, very, very tough for a goalkeeper to get a low move in January where he's going to go and play. And the reason for Everton will probably be he'd be better off staying, working with, you know, Pickford, Olsen, Lossell and playing under 23 matches as and when than going and sitting on the bench for a championship team. So that's an interesting one. An interesting one to see what happens with with Joe in the summer because he, he certainly is a prospect and I think everyone was disappointed by how it worked out at Redden last season. Uh, then they've got two decisions to make at centre half. I think to anyone who watched the mini derby, two of Everton's best players were probably the centre backs, Con Uzanidis and Ryan Ashley. They're both out of contract in the summer, so I think as far as far as I can tell, I think they'd be both of them would probably be open to even permanent moves. Uh, if if the right one came up because they, they don't have a contract at the end of the season, whether Everton look to to renew that and loan them out remains to be seen. But you know a decision at the very least has to be made by Everton, even if it's you know we'll keep you to the end of the season and, and then release you. But I think if that was the case, they'd both probably be looking to find a club um, before that. So it'd be quite interesting to see what happened with, with both of them too. Um, Kyle John had interest in the summer uh, at right back. You know, teams in the football league who, who who need cover of fullback could certainly look at him. He's been a pretty consistent performer for the 23s over the last few years. You've got Benny Beningamy. Uh, you know, we, we spoke about him earlier. A senior player for the 23s now would probably want to go out on loan. Um, and then you've got Nathan Broadhead and Josh Josh Bowler, who you know it, it looks like both of them will will need to ultimately move on, whether it be in January or the summer, but. They're both good lads, and, and I think they'd rather be playing senior football sometimes. I think Broadhead had a decent loan spell at Burton last season. He seemed highly thought of there. Didn't quite work out for Bowler at Hull, um, but whenever I've seen him play for the 23s, he's, he's stood out, and there's definitely been scouts there uh, that I've seen over the last few months who've, who've came specifically to, to watch Josh Bowler as well. So um, there could be interest for him in the next few months from, from certainly League One clubs if not a little bit higher. Obviously, he played in the Championship with Hull last season. So, um, it'll be interesting to see who, who comes in for them. But I'd, I'd certainly expect them two to go out. I think attackers are pretty easy to to move on in loan in, in January. You know, if teams are looking to either fire themselves away from danger or into those playoff places. Um, I think Broadhead and Barlow will be sound pieces of business. Um, what, what will happen with the defenders and, and Benny Beningamy? I'm not too sure, but I think Marcel Brand will probably want to continue cleaning the decks as he has been doing at under-23 level over the last you know, 18 months, two years to, to make sure that by the start of next season, you know, the average age of that team is you know, 18, 19, as it should be kind of thing. Yeah, definitely. I'd be looking at developing players rather than uh, kind of keeping them there for the sake of I was surprised, to be honest, uh, bro, that didn't get a move because I thought he did well a bit and when he wasn't injured because he was a little bit unlucky with a couple of injuries as well. Um, and ba- ba- um, Bala as well. Obviously, a decent spell at home, but it was a little bit... Uh, he kind of came off the bench a few, t- a few times. He had a couple of... Uh, performances that the whole fans didn't seem too happy with but he showed bright touches at the same time as well so we're hoping he gets a, a move as well um, one player who seems to be staying at the club obviously because he's only just arrived last uh, last summer and he, he seemed to be thrown straight into the first team and has since moved back into the under-23s is Niels and Kunku and a lot of a lot of the fans have called for him to be in the first team more because obviously ancelotti has been pay, playing Ben Godfrey at left back out of position instead of giving Neil and Kunku a chance, which is controversial among some fans. But uh, I think he had a difficult performance at Newcastle uh, earlier in the season, which a lot of fans criticised him for. But it's, it's kind of split opinion. So uh, it seems that he's back with David Unsworth and under 23s at the moment because he started to do mini derby, didn't he? Uh, what do you think's going on with him at the moment? So is he between the first team and the 23s? I don't think he'll be. He's between in terms of you know he'll be going in and, and he'll be training with the first team every day. Um, and I, to be honest, I, I think it's Carlo has been 
has been perfectly vindicated with winning Kunku. I think, you know, the performances of Ben Godfrey at left back, you know, who could argue with how good uh, he's been? And I think that anyone who watched the mini derby um, the other night with, with, with Niels, I think the thing is that it, it did just show that, and I'm not criticising him at all because, you know, I've, I've loved watching him this season. I think his, his couple of little cameos, well, not cameos, his performances in the in the League Cup, you know, were, were really one of the most excited I've been watching a young Everton play in a long time. And I think he is going to turn out to be a great signing, but I don't think he, he's ready yet for, you know, consistent Premier League football. I think Everton benefited from having Ben Godfrey at left back against, you know, Chelsea, uh, Arsenal, you know, those, those games that we won over Christmas at Leicester, then we would have done if, if we would have been forced to put Kunku in there because, you know, even against Liverpool at times, just as young players do, you know, he was a, he was a little bit sloppy, you know, sometimes his positioning could be better, his, his final ball can be better, his decision making certainly could have been better, you know, and, and that's all part of a young player's development, so I think right now that between the Manchelotti and, and Unsworth are getting that split right, you know, going to first team training, you cannot have a better person to look up to every day than Luca Dean. I think, you know, couldn't leave the, the best left back in the Premier League. And then, you know, you, you can play games, get your minutes in the under twenty threes. Dave Dunsworth was a left back, you know, he certainly knows his footy. Leighton Baines, one of the best left backs England has ever seen as a country, ever produced, you know, can can give him some advice and give him some knowledge. So I think there's, there's no rush. You know, he's an 18, 19 year old lad. Uh, seems to be popular as teammates as well. Seems to have made mates with you know your your Alex Awobis and people like that, which is which is good to see. Especially you know a, a young lad moving over to to the country for the first time. So th- th- there's no problem, and I think everyone's just just got to accept that you know it, it it does take time to to adapt. And I think maybe this time next season we could be then looking at if Dean you know touch what he doesn't, but if if he did get injured. Um, that I think then Ancelotti could say, okay, yeah, he, he's he's ready now. But certainly for the time being, now that we've kind of stumbled upon, a, you know, when we were playing kind of five at the back and a Wobi left wing back and things like that in the first team, I, I was thinking, you know, surely in Kunku has got to be be worth a go. But I think for the time being, it, it worked, didn't it? With, with Godfrey at left back, and now that Luca Dean's back, Niels can can make his minutes up, and um, and then by playing for the under-23s and, and training with the first team. But, you know, that being said, it would be interesting in the summer, wouldn't it, if if Carlo is happy with, with Godfrey being the kind of backup left-back? Would, would Everton maybe look to get him a loan move? I'm not too sure. Um, but certainly food for thought, I think. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens with him. Uh, just finally then, uh, we've said about players who might move on in January um, and potentially that'll give a chance to some of the under-23s who'd be staying put a chance uh, to, to impress David Unsworth. And uh, we've seen, uh, I think, Reece Hughes scored the goal in the first minute for Everton in the mini, mini derby. So he might be one for, to look out for. Is there any other names in the under-23s who you think will be, uh, be standout players to look out for once, once uh, we have moved on some of the uh, some of the 23s in this in this January window? Um, well, th- there's obviously lads in there who've, who've been kind of getting minutes this season. Uh, you know, Reese Hughes, Seb Quir, uh, Mackenzie Hunt, I think, starting into Tottenham. Th- these are all lads to, to kind of watch out for. Einar Iverson has, has broken into the, the 23s and is pretty much a regular now. Um, and then th- there's going to be lads who are moving up through the under-18s. You know, Katia Kuyate has, has just kind of broken into the 23s and Dave Dunsworth gave him his full under-23 debut against Blackburn in the same game that he did with Thierry Small, you know, which, which is showing the kind of change in culture in the 23s of, of bringing young lads in and giving them a chance and, and he was very complimentary of, of Katia after that game um, so he's, he's definitely one to watch out for and I think anyone who keeps their eye on the under, under 18 results as well you know there's Lewis Warrington he's an Everton season ticket holder I think he won the uh, the club goal of the month not long ago for, for a lovely free kick that he scored for the under 18s he's certainly one to watch out for he seems to be a kind of Midfield with a bit of everything to his game, you know, he can he can score, he can tackle. Uh, he's got a, a good little eye for a pass and, and set piece on him as well. Uh, and then there's the Sean McAllister as well, who, who we brought into the club uh, not too long ago from Dungannon Swift in Northern Ireland. Uh, he's captain of the under 18s at the moment, and he's 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 piping up with a few goals as well from midfield. Uh, seems to be developing really really well under Paul Tato. I'd imagine it won't be too long until we see those lads in the first team. 
Uh, Thierry Small, another one who's broken in, definitely one to keep an eye on. And, and there's a centre back called Reese Welsh as well, who uh, apparently Marcel Brands has, has been impressed by when watching the under 18s. Um, so, you know, as, as we're talking about Astley and who's in Edis' future, I think he'll definitely be one to, to step up to the 23s in the next six to 12 months. So, uh, definitely going to be some new names coming through for Evertonians and, and definitely now starting to take shape in, in what I think Marcel Brands wanted to, you know, clear out the lad to. You know, for whatever reason, it's clear that I think once I get to 21, 22, if he's not broken into the first team, very slim chances that it will happen. So, you know, we're all already seeing, you know, at the end of this season, I think Matty Pennington and people like that are out of contract. So, that um, they'll start to leave the club. And, and over the next couple of years, we'll, we'll kind of see that whole under-18, under-23 structure completely changed. I think, you know, as, as we've seen, you know, new roles for David Unsworth, for John Ebrill. And I think it's all about streamlining and that route from you know 16 to 18 to 23 to first team I think they want that to become a lot more fluid a lot more structured and make sure that we don't end up with what we have done over the last few years you know it's frustrated fans of seeing the same names and the same faces in in that 23 team so yeah be good to there uh, to keep updating everyone on on those names I think and and definitely hopefully when uh when this pandemic eases off and, and we're allowed back into stadiums I, I think that there could be a lot of interest in, in people wanting to go down and watching the 18s and the 23s because there are going to be a lot of new faces and names to kind of get used to. So I think it's going to be an exciting uh, 12 months for the under-23s and hopefully these new lads can come in and make an impact and, and we can be talking about some uh, some new stars of the future for the Blues. Yeah, definitely. Keep an eye on the Everton production line. It seems the future is very bright. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of names to keep an eye on there. And I'm sure when fans are, are allowed back to stadiums again, we'll kind of just want to get a footy fix. So we'll be down to any games any games possible. And obviously as well, they've got the deal where you can go and watch the uh, the youth teams if you've got an Everton season ticket as well. So, uh, so yeah, uh, the future's bright. So nice one for providing another um, another great insight for us into the 23s. Um, so uh, thanks for joining me, Sam. And, uh, and, and um, definitely... Wants to keep an eye out there, some names to remember for the future. So, hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, hope you keep tabs on the twenty threes as well, because that's what that's what uh, that's the future of Everton. So, it, it, it's uh, it's always good to keep an eye on the twenty threes. So, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thanks a lot for watching. Uh, don't forget to obviously subscribe to the channel and like and comment uh, anything uh, you've every inch cropped up. Uh, from the video and obviously give us a follow as well on Twitter our tags are below uh, give give Sam a follow for all the latest breaking news in the Liverpool Echo um, and yeah uh, join us next time we'll, we'll, we'll provide another update uh, on the 23s very soon so keep an eye out for it and uh, thanks a lot and join us next time on the Toffee Blues <laughs>